Hi guys, welcome back to Mr. Mechanical. Um, this time I'm working on a different project. I've decided that um, I need to get some practicing um, later down the line in the catering project. I'm go I've got an engine to make, and so I thought it would be a good idea to have a go at maybe making a smaller, more simple engine, and maybe depending on how long it takes. Uh, build up to the sort of level that I'm going to be making for the uh, mini caterer. So what I've done is I've downloaded some drawings for the Ball Aero 18 and that's it's just a small 1.8cc engine. Um, it's not very big, it's got a half inch bore and just over a half inch stroke and uh, you can get these drawings freely available online so I decided to go with this one so in this video I'm going to be uh, starting with the crank case which is made out of um, one inch square aluminium bar I've already uh, cut and faced off one end of this bar down to the right size um, and as I say, the pro idea of this series is that it'll run alongside the catering projects and it'll give me opportunity to work on achieving tolerance fits and slide fits and uh, just get a feel for where I need to improve. So the next thing to do is to look at the drawings and work out what to do next. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to start with the hole that goes straight through the side which is where the crank the crankshaft will um, go in So I'm going to leave it there. I was aiming for 22.6. I'm now at 22.61. So that's going to have to do, I think. Yeah. So I think that's that bar finished. So one thing I have learned is I'm not really sure what the increments are on this boring head. It's maybe Imperial, but I'm sure I bought a metric one. It, uh, the increments on this dial go from zero round, well, full circle is 75 increments. So, yeah, so. I've got 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, and then back to 0. So that would bring us to 75 on a full circle. Okay, so we'll move on to the next part on here. So I've got some holes to drill. So I'll get that done. Um, holes to drill for an M3 hole, four of them around that, six mil deep. Okay, so I've got that hole bored now for the crank. It's now time to bore the hole where the cylinder liner is going to go. Um, so that's just centre in the top of this part. Uh, I've also drilled the holes for fixing the main bearing and the cap that goes on the back side but they still need tapped okay guys so that hole is now bored out to the right dimension if anything it's uh, 
0 0.05 of a mil over um, I don't think it matters too much because the next part that goes into there the sleeve um, I can adjust that to accommodate the right fit so all that's left to do on this part is drill four holes in the top and then there's some holes to put in the sides okay so the crank case is now complete it's got all the holes drilled it's got the bars drilled for the uh, cylinder and the crank itself so the next thing to make is there's a cap to make for one side um, and then we've got the main bearing to make for the other side so we'll get that done they're lathe jobs I think most of what's left to do is in the lathe so um, we'll get that in the lathe um, again it's out of aluminium and uh, we'll see how it goes Okay, so I've now got the first two parts of this engine made. I've got the crankcase cap, which is also a way of mounting um, the engine to whatever you want. And I've got the crankcase complete now. So those parts uh, go together, I've got quite a nice fit. Pushes together quite nice. So the next part I'm going to make will come off um, this side and that'll be where the prop, the uh, crankshaft will be, um, the main bearing from for the crankshaft, I believe that's called the main bearing housing that we're going to make next. Again it's out of inch square alloy bar and we're going to make it in the lathe and there's some reaming to do as well on the centre bar so we'll get that done next. Okay, so I've got that uh, main bearing complete now. Um, I'm quite happy with it. What I've done um, is I've moved on to indexable uh, lathe tools now and uh, that's proved to give us a lot better finish. And uh, I've also done a bit more work on my lathe. I've uh, replaced the gib screws on the cross slide. What I found was the hex in the original gib screws had rounded um, so there wasn't really any fine adjustment left on those and it gave us a bit of a, a jerky movement um, especially when I needed a smooth feed um, for parting off and so now parting off is a lot smoother with those new gib screws and the uh, indexable parting tool 
so yeah I'm happy with that part so I'll just show you how these parts go together um, so we've got the original crank case that we made um, and then I've got the rear cap and uh, they just put together and then there's screws that can uh, hold it together I won't, I'm not going to screw it together yet because I've still got the rest of the engine to make got the uh, piston and the crank still to go in there um, so I'm quite happy with that fit you can hear it just clip in um, and then this part again it just pushes in and again that's a nice fit I actually have to push that part out to get it out so that is quite a nice um, push fit there so there we have it progress on my first model engine quite happy with it so I'm gonna call that the end of part one of this series um, I think the next video I do will be back on the Caterham I've got some parts that have arrived for it uh, which I'll show you in that video and uh, I've also done some drawings for the steering rack which will probably be what we make in the next video so thanks for watching um, please subscribe if you haven't already like and comment if you enjoyed this video if you're uh, an engine builder yourself any uh, tips that you might have uh, would be appreciated and uh, I'll see you again next time